Hey everyone, in, uh, in this video, uh, I'll be going over ghost nodes and how to calculate them. Uh, so if you haven't watched my other video uh, on normal vectors, uh, I would recommend watching that first, um, because you'll need them here. Okay, so, ghost nodes. So, these green, okay, so the black thing is your grid. This is a curvilinear grid, as I described. It's the same grid that I used for the previous video on normal vectors. Uh, it's a curvilinear grid. Um, and these green X's around here are ghost nodes. So they're called ghost nodes, at least in this case, because they're not physically inside the grid, they're outside of the grid boundary. So they're kind of ghost, ghost-like. Um, okay, and we wanna know, we wanna calculate where these ghost nodes are. Uh, and we're gonna do that based off of, we're gonna do that based off of the, uh, the boundary normal vectors, which I described in that other video, and the points the, the points that are right in the interior, so the, uh, like on this right boundary, we're going to be using the points that are on the next, the next inward points, essentially. So, if this is the j equals zero boundary, right, because j goes in this direction, so if this is the j equals zero boundary, we're going to be using the j equals one nodes and reflecting them with the normal vector across the boundary to figure out where the ghost nodes are uh, in space. So, uh, so again, we have a grid, and... The grid is specified using x and y coordinates at each of these points, at each of these ij locations. So that's all known. We have all that information. All right. Uh, real quick, why do you need why do you need ghost nodes? Um, one of the reasons is for uh, when you have a curvilinear grid, you need to transform it to a um, to a uniform rectangular grid uh, before you before you start solving the equations, and you need metrics of the transformation, which I went over in another video. Uh, and this is one of the ways, ghost nodes uh, are one of the ways that you can get the metrics on the boundaries. Uh, the way that I went over in my other video was using a second order one-sided difference, but you can also use ghost nodes. Um, and then another reason is for boundary condition specification, uh, you might need ghost nodes uh, to specify boundary conditions along the edges of the of the grid. Okay. So that's kind of why we care about ghost nodes. And so what I did here is I took these two cells and I brought them kind of here and I skewed them a little bit to show you that it doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, aligned like that. So this is just those two cells. And since this is the j equals zero boundary and this is the j equals one boundary, I said this is the j equals zero boundary, so that's the boundary that we're looking at. This is the j equals one line, so that's the one node in. And what we calculated before in the previous video was these normal vectors on these faces. So we have like this normal vector here, n1, uh, with the arrow on top uh, defining that as a vector, and the n2 on this face here. Okay, and what we're going to do is for this point here, which I'm going to call i0, we can say that it's 0 because it's on the j equals 0 line, and this point up here is i1 because it's on the j equals 1 line, we want to calculate the normal or the ghost node associated with the inward point and the normal vector. Uh, which is this green ghost node, essentially. So first of all, I'm using a normal vector that's an average of these two face, uh, these face normals. So that's literally just an average of the two. Uh, this, this is just one way to do it. There's other ways to do it too, but this is just one of the ways to do it. So it's really just an average of these two normals, and it gives you something in between. And that's at this point here. So, um, so on the same kind, this is the same. Uh, I line, so this is I0, I1, so they're on the same I line. So we're going to use the normal at this I point for the for the ghost node calculation using this same I line point. So what we're doing is we're really taking this point and, uh, and moving it across uh, the boundary essentially to outside the bound, outside the actual grid using this normal vector. Okay. That's enough explanation there. So we're gonna go down to here. What we need is the we, we need this distance uh, from the point on the boundary to the inner node. And okay, so the the I call this point up here px and py. So the x location is px, and then the y location is py. And the ghost node I call gx gy. Uh, okay, so this is red. This is red down here. So uh, I have this point here. This is the i comma zero point, and this is the i comma one point. And we're going to break it up into components again. So we have the dx um, and the dy component for this d vector. And so the dx is, again, like similarly to how we calculated for the normal uh, 
for the normal vector components, uh, we're just going to take the x value here minus the x value here. So that's x of, uh, this should actually be x of uh, i1 minus x of i0, and that should be, uh, and then for the dy it'll be i1 minus i0, um, just so it's not confusing. Okay, so we have 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So that gives us these dx and dy uh, lengths. And then to find the d, uh, to find the, the magnitude of d, okay, I have a couple errors here. To find the magnitude of d, uh, we take the, uh, we sum of the squares, take the square root of the sum of the squares. So dx squared plus dy squared square root gives us the magnitude of this, of this vector. Um, okay. So then, now that we have the magnitude of this vector, or we have the, you know, the, we have the dx and the dy, we can get the location of the ghost nodes because we know uh, the normal, the normal vector which we calculated before, and the normal vector in the extraction is uh, is aligned with the, uh, with the dx, and the normal vector in the y is aligned with the dy component. So, this is the equation for finding the ghost node points. So this is in vector form. So we have the g. So the g points is equal to the p points plus two times the distance vector times the uh, times the normal vector. So to split that up into components, uh, we have the gx point is equal to the px point plus two times the distance in the x or the the yeah, the distance in the x um, direction times the normal in the x direction. So distance in the x times normal in the x, and that'll give you the gx the x location of this ghost node, and then to get the y location of the ghost node, it's the same kind of formula, where it's py, so it's the y location of the inner point, plus two times uh, the y uh, magnitude of this vector, times the normal vector in the uh, y direction, and that will give you the, and that will give you the locations of the ghost nodes, and so when you're when you're doing this, I only did it for this one boundary here. You would have to do it for this boundary, this boundary, and this boundary as well, uh, and that would change your indices. Um, that would change what you're calling them. Uh, so if I was gonna, if I were going to loop uh, along this boundary here, um, I would first need to find I would first need to loop to find the the uh, or well, I wouldn't need to separate them into two loops, but I would need to find the average normals for that point, and then I would need to go through and calculate where the actual ghost node were or was. Um, and and yeah, so you just do that for every single boundary, and then you have your full ghost nodes, and uh, and then you can use those for, like I said, metrics or uh, boundary conditions or the equations, whatever you want to use them for. Uh, and that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.